Rat King! I screamed. It's a Rat King! The thing startled at the noise and swiveled its nine heads toward me. That's right, nine freaking heads! I stumbled backward, landing hard on my butt. I scooted back across the frozen ground as the thing undulated down the tree. It was worse than I had ever imagined, even after hearing the urban legends that give nightmares to every New York kid with a healthy self-preservation instinct. Nine rats joined together by a tangle of tails crept down the tree toward us. But the tails weren't joined by gunk or glue. They had melded together into one veiny disc so it looked like a fleshy frisbee had sprouted rats. The nine weren't moving independently either. They were moving as one, inching down the tree, staring at me like they were being controlled by one brain. The rats were all the same size, too big to be normal, too small to make moving as a unit impossible. But the most terrifying thing of all was the one pure white rat who seemed to be the host of the other's thoughts, leading the path down the tree, swiveling his head toward the undead boy a split second before the others. The boy rounded his shoulders, looking like he would have growled if he ever made noise. The Rat King looked to Eric, who said in an overly calm voice, The coloring does seem symbolic, doesn't it? What? I screeched. Big mistake. It made the thing look back at me. Whoa, Bryant. Eric stepped aside, leaving a wide path between the nine-headed monster and me. We've helped you find the beast. Now catch him. Nope! The scream tore from my throat as I leapt to my feet. Nope! Not going near it! The evil, disgusting monster chittered as it reached solid ground. Bryant, just trap the thing, Eric said tiredly. But I couldn't remember a spell. I couldn't think of any words. So again, I shouted, nope. I ran backward a few steps. I wanted to run all the way to Brooklyn, but I couldn't bring myself to look away from the monster's 18 beady black eyes. Bryant, you're being rather ridiculous. Something heavy fell down the leg of my pants, slowing my progress as I stumbled over it. No, no, no. The thing was only five feet from me. What the hell is that? A voice spoke from somewhere behind me, and the other voices answered. Wonderful, Eric sighed. Bryant, we really need to be done here. Done? I wanted to be done. I wanted the rat to be dead. In a fit of theater-bred frenzy, I remembered the Nutcracker and that little girl killing a giant mouse with her shoe. I reached down to pull off my sneaker, but there was something else on the ground. A nice, heavy, sturdy-looking bag. I picked up the bag and threw it at the Rat King. It hit him straight in the frisbee of conjoined tails, making the thing scream as hundred-dollar bills flew into the air. Money! A voice screamed behind me. There were other words, too. Is it real? Get it! Watch out for the rat! Stop! I shouted at the top of my lungs. I didn't know what I was telling to stop. The Rat King that was only a few feet from me, or the people trying to get to my dad's illicit bake sale money. The monster hissed, baring its teeth. Oh, dear. Eric tipped his head down, looking like I was the most disappointing thing in the history of the world as random people charged toward me, braving the rat for a chance at money. Dothranta. Everything went black. If the people charging toward my dad's money hadn't started screaming, I might have. There was a hissing sound, then screeching as something thumped to the ground. It might seem cowardly, but I didn't step toward the shrill squeal. I backed away, careful not to fall. With a crack and a thump, the screeching stopped, but the people were still screaming. Someone banged into me, knocking me to the ground. Eric? I shouted hoping he would have a way to see in his darkness. Eric! He didn't answer, but a hand grabbed the back of my jacket, hauling me to my feet.